Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome on in. Hello, Batman. Hello, Silver. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Yes. Happy New Year's Eve. Happy weekend for everybody. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Let's go ahead and switch. There we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the basement lab again. <laughs> How are we all doing out there? Hopefully you're all having a good weekend so far. You'll have to excuse me, I'm doing a bit of a, a <clears throat> little bit of a, a janky setup here. I have droid cam. I'm actually using my phone as a camera. Did you, no, did I just screw it up? I hope I didn't just screw it up. But it does seem to be lagging just a little bit. Okay. That's fine. We'll keep it like that. But yes, as you can see, we now have three cameras down here. We have one for our overhead shot. We have one for our... <laughs> Is this my office in the network? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Yes and no. This is uh, not my office, but this is my lab. But yeah, this is our uh, uh, this is my basement. You can see a lovely view of everything and the mess that it is <laughs> uh, out there behind me. And you can see we have our overhead view here with uh, our still half built uh, our half built uh, printer, uh, which I'm very pleased with. I finally got this uh adjusted i did so that it it slides up and down easily what does my shirt say my shirt says i love my enemies they taste good <laughs> yes i love my enemies they taste good uh this is a gift from one of our friends and you're making warhammer batman nice very nice all right so we are going to be working more on building the 3d printer uh but i also wanted to take a little bit of time and kind of show you guys what uh goes into 3d printing like as a whole avid loyalist nice for the emperor let me get rid of that piece of plastic because that was getting in the way and annoying me. And we'll get all of our stuff here. So what I have uh, right now is, hold on, let's get my desktop here. And uh, let's go ahead and transition so you can see everything. Uh, so I have a, yes, for the emperor. What? No. Uh, so I have uh, a Raspberry Pi running Octolapse, which is connected to my printer, which you can see in the lower corner there. You should be able to... S nah, no, it's not in the lower corner yet, but you can see here uh, in my window. Well, in fact, you know what? Let me blow this up so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. So, yeah, I've got a camera feed from my uh, from a, print a camera hooked up to my printer and Octoprint. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff. Um, okay, good. I did, I did slice that as a uh, PLA. That's good. All right. Jiro the Jackal, I'm making shoulder pauldrons for a cosplay of a Fire Emblem character. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go into what, uh, entitle, like what, what you need to do to like 3D print, like the whole process. Uh, and currently, uh, what I need to do actually is I need to load some filament into my printer. Uh, let's see, how can we best do that? We're gonna do this. Whoop! Yeah, except it's upside down. <laughs> uh, of course it is. Anyway, so let's get my filament loaded. Uh, I'll show you what we're going to be printing here. We've got our got our lovely filament here. 
sh trying to show it to the camera. There we go. And how's Crafty doing? Crafty's doing good. Crafty is doing good today. We're just chilling on this New Year's Eve. But yeah, I got this awesome what is this, Polymaker Polylite uh, PLA Pro, which means it's tougher than standard PLA. Um, there you go. And it's this lovely, lovely kind of grass green. So we're going to be loading that up here. And actually, I tried these filament clips, these things, and I didn't really like them. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those, but we'll find out. Uh, all right, so. Uh, the reason I call her Fox Mom is because she's your Twitch mom. Yep. <laughs> That's all right. She was kind of a, con a convention mom before uh, before Twitch, back when we were working on uh, back when we were working conventions. All right, so let's go ahead and load this up. As you can see, I've made numerous modifications to this particular printer. Lots of 3D printed parts. This spool holder. It's very nice. I like it. Runs on a couple of bearings. Make sure that's nice and tight. Not necessarily tight, but snug. And all right, menu printer. All right, I tapped on the screen and the printer screen just went white. So let's reboot the printer. Do I mean to have OBS showing? Yes. I did mean to transition to this camera, though, even though it's upside down. All right, so menu, change filament, load filament, preheat PLA. That's going to heat the nozzle up to 200 degrees. And I need to clip this. And then run it into the machine. Hopefully I don't shock myself. filament sensor into the extruder and then we just wait for it to load up in the meantime what I'm gonna do is we need to clean the bed because of my last print actually that reminds me I need to make a quick run to Menards later today Quick clean of the bed with some isopropyl alcohol. All right. Yes, to save big money. Now I need to get plexiglass for my la latest project, which is, where did I put it? This. Not latest project, but a project that I was working on. Um, so what I got as a gift from my father-in-law was a multi-segment LED display and I found this model which allows you to mount this and that just slides in there I'm not mounting it because it's a really hard to get out but it reflects the um, there's a piece of plexiglass in here and it reflects it as a uh, like a heads-up display so I need to finish that and it says insert filament press button to continue now it's gonna feed the filament I'm going to put that back over there and now we wait oh shoot this is not hot enough 
there's still some uh, PETG black in there. So I actually need to increase the amount. We're going to continue. We're going to increase the temperature to 230 so I can melt that stuff. And then we need to extrude some more. I yeah, know, not the greatest. Not the greatest view. But we'll get back to it. All right, this thing heats up pretty quickly, which is one of the things that I love. All right, move motion, move axis, move extruder, extrude 10 millimeters. It's going to do this quite slowly, unfortunately. So we'll just have it do uh, 50. Oh, well, maybe there isn't black in there. Maybe the cleaning filament that I had in there was okay. And if that's the case, we can drop the temperature back down. And then what I'm going to do is actually manually feed this in until I feel it start pressing through, which I just did. Now I can go motion, move extruder, move 10. And we'll have it extrude 50 millimeters. And once I start seeing green popping out here. Yeah, there's still some... Looks like there's still some black in there. So... We're going to adjust the temperature. We're going to go back up to 230. And just tell it to extrude a hundred millimeters this time. All right. There we go. That well, looks like it's coming out nice. I'll wait for that to stop moving, and then I can just clear the extruder. I know this is a little bit wasteful. Am I upside down? No, I'm upside down because I haven't... Uh, this camera is upside down, and I haven't bothered to change it. Are you done? You're done. Okay, good. Get rid of that. Drop the temperature back down. We'll do our hold temperature of uh, 120. All right, there we go. So, yes. Should flip it in OBS. It's kind of nauseating. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do we got in our our overhead? We're in overhead view. Transform. Flip vertical. There. <laughs> All right, that should be a little bit better for right now. But we are going to go back to uh, building here in just a few moments. What I need to do right now is... Uh, what do we got? Neptune 2. That's our heads up. All right, so we're going to go back to our... Uh, 
on a second. Is there a setting I can do here? Aha! That works. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and reconnect to our printer here. And you can see I've got a nice little camera view here. It's a little washed out, but that's because it's not the best. All right, so we're connected. Uh, we're holding temperature-wise. And Octoprint is really nice. It has this all kinds of, uh, uh, of cool things. But what we're going to do is, here's, you can see, an older project of mine, which we're going to get rid of. And we are going to, we're going to import an STL here. So what this pro what this pro uh, blah, 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 blah. what this program is is this is called Prusa Slicer. This is um, made by Prusa uh, printers, uh, specifically for their printers. But they have opened it up. It's open. It's it's mostly open source. Um, no, it is open source as far as far as I know. Not mostly, it just, it is open source, but um, uh, you can use it with any other printer, basically. Um, yes, words is hard. <laughs> words is hard. Um, so you can open it up with any, uh, 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 you can use it with any, uh, any printer. And what I'm specifically going to do is I want to print a certain thing. And we're going to check printables.com, which is a great website. This is also by Prusa Printers. Um, but this is what I wanted to print. I wanted to print this, so we're going to download um, a 3MF file. I don't want to sign in at the moment. Okay. So that's been downloaded. We're going to add that in. All right. So we've got our scraper there. Uh, we are going to print at 16, uh, 0.16 millimeters for a layer height. Let's look at our print settings here and make sure everything's good. 0.16, infill is good. Uh, what does my infill need to be? This doesn't say what the infill needs to be. What are some of the people? What are they doing? Other printers, what are they? What settings are they printing? Printing, printing, printing. Come on, give me some settings. Tell me what you what you printed it at. Well, we're just gonna go with the default of uh, of twenty percent. Uh, twenty percent adaptive cubic infill. And uh, let's see. Everything else should be set up properly here. Slicing mode, regular, yeah, yeah, yeah. Output options, verbose, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's look at our printer settings and make sure those are set up properly. Uh, oh, my axes. Load the last mesh, that's good. Okay, okay. All right, good. So, we're gonna take this and we are going to slice it. It's gonna run some calculations. It's gonna give us our tool paths and everything. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, so this is going to take about 17.46 grams. It's going to take about 2 hours and 43 minutes to print. Uh, click this button to upload it. 
and we're going to upload that. Go back to our handy dandy web interface. I'm going to trash this older copy of that. And let's go ahead and select this. We're going to load it and hit print. And it's going to start to print. Right now, it's just going to warm up the bed. But then you'll see it start to do something here in a couple of minutes. But yeah, we'll just keep that. So what are we printing this hexadick thing for anyway? <laughs> uh, this is a bed scraper. This is uh, uh, this is going to be a tool to get um, help get things off of the print bed, like uh, um, purge lines and um, skirts and things like that. Like I have a flexible print bed. I can just pull this up and uh, flex it to pop the part off. But um, smaller, uh, thinner, more flexible things don't come off as easily. So this is just a tool to kind of get those off. Yeah, <laughs> also possibly useful for windshields, yes. All right, so while that's doing that, let's go back to our overhead camera. Ironic tool printed by tool. <laughs> so let's get our overhead view back. It's the browser. Okay, it's the overhead shot. All right. So we are back to working on oh, metal or something there. Um, we're back to working on this 3D printer. By the way, folks, if the music is too loud or anything like that, let me know. This uh, this blue mat here is actually this was a gift for that I received for Christmas. This is a soldering mat. Um, it is designed to be um, uh, it's burn proof so you don't burn your desk or anything uh all right so we are um let me go ahead and hide this image we don't really need that anymore there we go there we go you can see we're getting to start here with our uh 3d printer it's printing a purge line All right. Sorry, I like to keep an eye on my printer for the first uh, part just to make sure that everything is going down the way that it should be. And it looks like it is. Perfect. Yeah, now it's just off and doing a thing. Do I put a release agent on the bed? It is uh, it is a non-stick. It's actually a PEI sheet uh, silver. So it grips really well when the plastic is hot, but when it cools down to room temperature, they come off very easily. Um, the other thing is, is like it, it's, a, it's a sheet of spring steel that's held down by a magnet. So I can literally just take the bed off and then bend it and it pops right off. <laughs> All right, so where were we? We were we we're getting started on building the uh, the printer here. Um, let me go ahead and move that over. And okay, so we are getting to the A B idlers now. Uh, as you can see, we've got our A and B um, motors mounted. I can't really tilt this because there's uh, maybe I can. Um, no, I can't because there's uh, nuts 
that are in these grooves uh, kind of all over the place uh, on this thing that uh, will fall out if I tilt it too much in one direction. Any plans for New Year's? No, Jiro, not really. We're just going to chill and watch a movie. We're just going to chill and watch a movie. Pardon me while I get a drink. And some adjusting camera wise. The only thing I don't like about this camera, this GoPro that I'm using, is that it has a slight fisheye. Alright, so we are working on the A and B idlers, which are going to go in this section right up in the front. Uh, okay, so I need to find the A and B idlers. A and B drives, okay. XY joints. Miscellaneous tools. Front idlers. There we go. All of these parts for this printer are watching the London Fireworks televised. Nice. All of these parts are 3D printed. It's actually pretty nice. Okay. Set those aside. So the A and B idlers, upper and lower parts, this is... That's part of the hot end mount. Um, we got here... I don't know if this is... No, that doesn't look like the right part. That doesn't look like the right part. Here we go. There's one of them. And there's the other one. One should be thick and one should be thin. So that's good. All right. Uh, this tool we're going to move. It can get moved over there. Watching documentaries, nice. going to get moved over there so we can work on this. Um, okay. Alright. So, for this, I need... M3 by 35s. Combi Volkite gun. Nice, Batman. Uh, those are some magnets. I don't know what these are. They're not labeled. M3 by 35. Oh, we need more bearings. Lovely. Okay. So, these go all the way through, and the holes are a little tight, so I'm probably going to need to screw these in all the way. Uh, I think this is the one we need. Yes. I'm constantly looking for a better angle. Uh, a better angle to use on the, uh, the 3D printer um, camera so I can see it better. Alright, that's enough that I should be able to just 
hand screw this through. Hey, Masonic, welcome on in. Welcome on in. How you doing? Bear with me, folks. There you go. This is not as tight as it goes. Yeah, that is as tight as it goes. Okay. Let's get this one in here. Crafty locked me in the basement again. <laughs> no, no, she did not. I'm down here by choice. Working on the 3D printer some more. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But we may... I don't know how long, how much longer I have uh, to go on this thing. We may actually finish this up today. That would be awesome if we did, but I doubt it. I really don't think we're going to get that far. There's still quite a bit to go. All right. So now I need those bearings. I need... Where's my shims? Those are M2 nuts. Knurled nuts. Self-tapping screws. Uh, what the heck are the shims? Probably in here somewhere. Pulleys have already been used. Various clips. Empty tube full of bearings. Hmm. Where are my shims? That's a problem. What the hell did I do with them? Sorry, folks. All right. There they are. I just overlooked them. Alright, and so what I need is, I'm going to put these on here, not going to need that many, alright. Oh, that did exactly what I didn't want. I'm trying to scoop these parts up and I ended up spilling more onto the onto the mat. Do you love dealing with tiny tiny parts? Don't lock me in the basement. Masonic, I'll just have to chew my way through a window. Okay. So, let's get our bearings out. Let's get our bearings. And, alright, so we're going to need one shim, one bearing, another bearing on top, and then another shim. Okay, there's that one. We'll do the same for this. That. Bearing on top. Another uh, bearing, and then another shim. The rest of these bearings can go back in the tube. 
until I need them. It's an empty one. Put that back in the bag too, just so it's not kicking around. All right, and then I need the I do need these pieces. Okay, that's one of them. And where'd the other one go? There we go. All right. So the big one, boom, gets the small piece. All right. Come on. All right, I guess you're gonna make me thread you. It's fine, it means less chance of... There we go. We'll just let that hang out like that for right now. And then this one, thread that on. Okay. Hmm. It is not seated all the way into that. I knew that wasn't all the way. Or it got unseated. Pardon me while I tighten this down. All right, that's not going anywhere anymore. All right, next. Ah, uh -huh, okay. So that gets, okay, what do we got? Big one. All right, so this one says we gotta preload some more nuts. Where's my square nuts? Lock nuts. Oh, fasteners, tools, miscellaneous. Around here somewhere. There's all the electronics and everything. Cable wiring. Ah, oh, come on. Square nuts. There we go. Oh no. And so we don't lose these shim washers. Let's get those back in the bag. Now this says we need to take, it says we need to preload four nuts. In this rail, But if I do that, they're gonna fall out. They're gonna fall out the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is we are going to take an M3 by eight, because I have a lot of them, and we're going to set it up as a break. So that uh, the rest can sit on top of that one. Okay. 
There we go. Just tighten that, make sure that that's all the way down. Now the rest of the nuts cannot fall past that point. So we got one. Two, actually three, and this will be number four. All right. Um, this is the smaller of, or the uh, the bigger of the two. So we're gonna go there. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna back this off a little bit. Just a little bit, so we can then take another 35 mil. I'm in JavaScript hell. I wish I was playing with a 3D printer. Oh no! Does the network have band-aids? Uh, we do, Batman, but I don't know how to get one to you, unfortunately. And, uh, Silver, are you, um, when you say you're in JavaScript hell, are you working with Node or, uh, doing something else in JavaScript? All right, this is going to go thread through here. Front end view using third party libraries that were built eight years ago and never updated. Oh, fun! Yeah, that is JavaScript hell. better for gaming a laptop or a desktop I'm gonna say a desktop because it's easier to upgrade I am always gonna say a desktop is better for gaming because it's easier to upgrade okay now this yeah uh, laptops tend to run hot too we're going to put this in here because we need to hit that. We need to hit. There's a um, no, don't drop that. These are going to go up here into this little pocket. See, I'm already finding use for this mat. It's great. So there's a nut in here. that I'm trying to get this screw into. And also trying to make sure that I can see what the hell I'm doing. Because I've had enough of trying to deal with these blind... Of course. can't turn the uh, screw enough. Because it's a little too tight on the clearance. Yeah, gaming laptops exist. But they're, they are getting better, but they still do have the upper hand in customizability. You are correct. You're 100% correct, Silver. At least in my opinion. All right, uh, let's see. Try and get this in here now. All right, so that's in place. Except it was.
All right, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out all the way. Hey, Crafty, you still in chat? What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to push this through just by force. She lurked. Hey, pole arms guy. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. How you doing? Hmm. Need to get a little bit more clearance in this hole. Sick, do not recommend. Yeah, I don't recommend getting sick either. I'm coming back from just the tail end of a sinus infection. You can probably still hear it in my voice. But I need this bolt to turn freely, and it doesn't. I mean, it turns, but it's that's because it's cut its own threads. <laughs> what desktop brand is best? Um, that is a good question. Me and the kid both got it from Xmas. No plague, thank goodness. Yeah. Still, it sucks sucks to be sick. I definitely don't recommend it. Alright. Can you pass freely through here yet? No. Gaming, you can just build your own if you feel comfortable doing it. That is true. That is what I do. When in doubt, use a hammer. Which, of course, doesn't work. Yeah, there we go. Of course, I didn't really clear anything. I don't have metric drill bits. Otherwise, I would ream this out with a, uh, a metric drill bit. Game desktops are some lesser-known brands like iBuyPower. Yeah, I've heard good things about iBuyPower. HP and Dell are pretty good, yeah. wonder if I can prop up that nut with something. that up there.
All right, there we go. Get a lovely close up of my hands. in there nice and solid let's back this one out a little bit and we need another so we got our nuts in there we need another m3 by 35 this one that's again gonna go through here let's try and kind of open that one up a little bit That trick of propping up the uh, nut actually helped quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, Batman. That's good. Good that the bleeding stopped. underneath it perfect good all right so then this just back this piece off a little bit Which brand of gaming desktop do I recommend? Like I said, I don't. I build my own gaming PC out of parts, so I don't really recommend a particular brand. Um, I have heard that Dell is pretty good. Um, honestly, I'd go with like I Buy Power, or to be frank, uh, even Alienware is pretty good. But that is kind of paying a premium. All right, that's nice and tight. Let's tighten up this one. Bingo. All right. All right, idlers are in. Ah, uh, nuts. I didn't preload. I needed to preload nuts, I think. 
No, actually, it didn't. It didn't say I had to preload uh, any nuts in here. Check your work. Okay, compare your assembled parts to the graphics shown here. Yes. They're going out like that. Um, what else? <laughs> That's in line with the top two rollers, yes. That one is in line with the bottom two rollers. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Now we're on to the Z-axis. All right. So, here's my square nuts. There's my bag with the square nuts. Because we'll just put these back. I need a nut button. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. That's good. That's good. So much junk. These, actually, these two tools can go out in my garage now. Because I have more. More Allen wrenches. Because I was very kindly gifted a nice, decent set of uh, ball end uh, Allen wrenches for Christmas. All the way down to 1.27 millimeters. Fantastic. So, pardon me while I make some movement adjustments. All right, uh, so we get to do a nerd gift. Yes, it is. It is It is what I asked for. It is exactly what I asked for. Um, okay. So now we need to get Allen keys. Yeah, Allen keys, Allen wrenches, hex wrenches. They're all kind of the same. Um, all right, so now we need the lead screw nut, which is right here. And the nut holder, which I think is another 3D printed part. X carriage Z nut block, T8 nut block, Z end stop mount, Z motor mount. What is the part I'm looking for? What does it look like? Not that. Not that. Nope. There it is. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so... Uh, those are M3 by 12s that I need. Uh, if your lead screw nut does not have M3 threads, use longer screws and M3 nuts to secure it. Uh, Nerd Gift is the highest compliment for people who want very specific things and let people know it. Yep, exactly. Alright, so... I need... Uh, M3 by 12s. Two of them. Is this threaded? It looks threaded. All right. So this is going to 
go through there for some reason. Now it fits just barely. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do it this way. Get in there. Tighten that down all the way. We're going to thread the other one. This is going to be a lot easier if I take that part out. So there's a little bit of adjustment that I can do here. I also don't want to strip these threads, so I can't tighten that down too much. All right. Bingo. All right, and this mounts here to the two previously preloaded nuts that we put in on the other side. Uh, what do I need for that? More M3 by 12s. And then we're going to need one more M3 by 12. <laughs> All right. You're just going to live out there for right now because it's just much easier not to have to deal with you. They seem very short, but I will defer to the, I will defer to the instructions. bumping the camera. All right, so get this in here. This is going to be a challenge. screwing into blind nuts. I actually got that one. I may have gotten them both. Yeah, nice. Well, that was a lot easier than I had anticipated.
All right, that's nice and tight. I don't want to lose any of the nuts that I have. You're going in there, and then another nut. No, not another nut. Another um, M3 by 12 goes in. Do not drop it. Do it this way. What track is this? This is digital anima. Okay. If y'all haven't heard of Red Limb, that's R-E-D-L-Y-M-B, um, and you dig on Synthwave and Electronica, I highly recommend Red Limb. They are very good. You can find them on Bandcamp. Digital Anima. <laughs> yeah, this is all stuff from the record label uh, DIY Music, which is run and created by uh, Jamie VX if you know who that is, and they are another, um, they are a furry musician, among other things. What? Get in there. Cut your threads and get in there. You're not going in there. It's an M3 by 12. But yes, if you if you dig on this music, go check them out. You can find them on Bandcamp. And they have offered all pretty much all of their music for being stream safe. I believe they use their own music on their own streams. Um cuz Jamie does stream. Man, you are tight. All right, you know what? We're just going to leave that like that for now. Okay. That's what she said, yes. <laughs> Time for a new part, which I believe, not that, what is this part? I believe it is this, yes, this is what it looks like, looks like that's what we need, and a bunch of M3x8s. Oh, that's the motor mount. Okay. Which is this NEMA integrated. Look at that thing. That's a thing of beauty. All right. So I'm guessing this is going to go like this. It's going to mount like that. Then I have to stand it for who I am, never let it go. It's going to mount like so. Yeah, I think that's how that's going to work.
I'm gonna work smart. There we go. Uh, I only need... Oh no, I need two M3 by eights and one M3 by six. So those are the eights. We'll put those in first so I don't confuse them. There's the M3 by six. Okay, so prop that up. in here. Uh-huh. To loosen this. Because everything's off kilter. Why are you off kilter like that? that and then the six mil goes in there do you not like how tight that is so we're gonna loosen these just to give me a little bit more wiggle room. Oh, that's much better. All right, tighten that one down, tighten that one down. Tighten that one down, okay. So, yep, all right. <laughs> of course, I have to flip this without losing the nuts that I have preloaded, which I don't think I can do unless I do this really fast. Of course I dropped a part. Just a moment. Yeah. Where did you go? There you are. All right. Um, 
Oh, this is telling me to preload nuts. Okay. same thing that we did before and we're just gonna hold these in place with some screws because I'm pretty sure I have extras um, we'll come across these and we'll remove them as necessary All right, so it says preload three nuts. One, and we'll go ahead and we'll trap that one between these two. on a minute folks just had to adjust something on the printer Side, I need to do three nuts actually on this side and on the back side. using these M3 by 8s as placeholders. And to keep the other nuts from falling out. Which is good. Alright, there's that. And I need some here.
Okay, that's one. There's two. There's three. Hey, Running Paw, welcome on in. Good to see you. How are you doing, my friend? far with that one. Doing good. Good to hear. Happy New Year's Eve to you. Tighten that one. Drop another nut in there. Okay, so we got nuts, nuts, nuts there, nuts there, nuts here, nuts here, nuts there. Now we need the feet. Front foot times two, rear left and rear right foot. Okay. So, let's see, what do these things look like? There's one of them. Two. There's three, and then here's the only other one that looks like that. Okay. <laughs> then... I need the M3x40s, these rubber feet, there's my M3x40s, let's put these away before I lose them. And I need four of these. Okay, so these two are the front feet. This one is the back left, which goes like so. And then this one is the back right, which goes like so. Okay, okay. Trying not to do stuff off camera here. Argon, how's the assembly coming along? It's coming along pretty well. We've got our Z-axis. Of course, I knocked something over. We've got our Z-axis uh, assembled, ready to, to put it on. Um, I missed... Hold on. 
I missed something. It said something about applying lubrication to the lead screw to prevent rust. Okay, I'll do that later. Because our next step is we're going to mount the, the Z-axis. But right now we're putting the feet on the unit. Now I'm tightening the rubber feet onto the unit. Making sure that's all lined up. We can tighten that down. How are you doing today, Argon? Happy New Year's Eve to you. That's not, that's not uh, making any more turns. Yes, that is my other printer going in the lower left. I am printing out, I'll show you what I'm printing out. We are printing out this is what we are printing out. No, oh, come back. Yeah, that's what we're printing out. So it's uh, going to be a tool for use with the 3D printers. making a few adjustments here. Okay. All right, that foot is on. Let's get this going. Doing good, almost nap time so I can actually be up for the fireworks, nice. Yeah, I'm probably going to stay up until midnight tonight. Just welcome in the new year, but then I'm going to go to bed. stuff off camera again. All right, you go here. And let's snug you down. This foot That's good. Tighten this one up at all. There we go. All right, last foot. Now 
a bit thirsty, so I'm going to grab a drink here. There we go. This tightened up. Oh, you're already poking out the bottom. Back that off a little bit. There we go. Right. We're going to do that trick with the M3x8s just to hold some of these nuts in place so they don't flop around all over the place and get underneath things. Those will act to kind of corral those preloaded nuts. How many more times can I say the word nuts? get to I don't have grease of course I don't have grease but I have uh, a little bit of oil must get awfully cold in my basement eh, it gets a little cold yeah I mean it's it is all concrete down here Just gonna grab one of these brushes, stash the rest of them over here. <laughs> and before we do that, let's just go ahead and
And we'll just put a nice coating of three in one oil on these. Just all the way up and down. Don't need a lot. Of course, these cheap little brushes that I got from Harbor Freight are shedding bristles all over the place. All right, and that'll be fine. Toss that out. Uh, usually basements stay fairly consistently cool even in winter. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm wearing a hoodie, but that's because I'm usually cold. Um, all right, so this is now time. I'm sorry you guys can't see this. But it is now time to thread. Is this how it goes? I'm going to get my hands all quickly now. Come on. Dang it. Bet you I have this thing backwards. Let's try that. So I have to thread the Z-axis now. Through the anti-backlash nut. There we go. And of course, now the hands are covered in oil. away before I spill it. It is a lot of nuts, yes. Yes, it is. Uh, 16C gets to, uh, gets to you. I wear a fleece in mine unless I have the PS running with the door closed, which makes the room very warm. Yeah, no kidding, right? Computers make wonderful space heaters. So that's been that's been installed. Now what I need to do is <laughs> take Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, good. There are two screws there. All right, I need to take those out. There were two screws that I put in here to hold these nuts, and I no longer need them. No longer need the screws to hold the nuts, I mean.
need something to hold this up while I'm working on it. That's too big. <sighs> That's too big. That'll work. other one out. Bouncing is fine. Yeah, okay. So now... Move a couple of these. You either side here. And I'm going to need M3 by 8. Uh, let's check these real quick just to make sure where they are handy dandy 3d printed screw identifier these are m3 by sixes all right where's my m3 by sixes there they are Okay. So we drop that into place. That there. Drop in an M3. this makes contact and it doesn't strip out the screw like I had problems last time. We're all the way down, but I'm not engaging the nut. Probably means that the nut is too low. So we're going to do our trick that we did before, which is prop it up. able to engage that now. Also want to make sure that that is sufficiently down so I can seat this properly. So 
totally missed the nut. And missed it again. There we go. Now, it's just the problem of getting this thing out. Come on. totally missed the nut again. Gosh darn it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> this is M3 by 8, right? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have used square nuts. Maybe I should have used uh, M3 standard nuts, which I don't think I can get in here anymore. I cannot. So I'm stuck with the square nuts. Oh well, live and learn. Try this a different way. We're going to try our propping technique, our, our little prop trick. But I'm going to use the short end of the Allen key. Make it easier to get out. Folks, got to move the camera just to make sure I'm in the right position. I think I am. centered at all.
All right, there's that. Now we gotta get some pieces. We gotta get under here. Oh, that's gonna be fun. All right. Because I gotta get under here now. And I gotta make sure that the nuts that I have seated back there are in the right position. And it's hard to see. Where's my... Got a light? Where did I put it? <sighs> this is the one thing that I never liked about my workshop, is that I swear... And I guess it's not really my workshop, it's me. That I put something down, I swear to God, and it just vanishes. Here it is. That's what I'm looking for. Trying to light this so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And one nut is almost in position. really see you have gremlins they move things up to 20 feet the instant you set something down and look away it's true get a good look at this. Really working. at least one of these in, then I can knock the other one back the other way. I think I got one of them in place. Hey, Pac, welcome on in. Welcome on in. Good to see you, bud.
All right. And house cleaning in the rain. Just took the trash out. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's not winter. All right. I know that if I try to do this, I'm going to drop this freaking screw. So I will use tweezers to try and hold it in place and not knock everything over. Yeah, that's not going to work. Thank goodness for slightly magnetic tools. There we go. Get in there. Is that a garage door in the corner? No. This is my basement pack. And, I mean, it's not that huge. Showmanship. Eternity dies. I mean, it's just under the front half of the house. Right. That is. It's that. Let's see if we can knock the other. Let's see if we can knock the other nut into position. I need a little bit more force. <laughs> Saw movement. Oh, perfect. That's almost in the right, pay, right position. All right. Yeah, the one white wall. I mean, every the walls are all painted white down here. Um, but yeah, that's actually the, come on, get in there. Are you in position that you think, yes, think you are in position. Here we go. All right, let's get a, another M3 by eight. Uh, everything down here yeah is uh painted white it was the previous owners that did it we don't know why easy to this is not an easy to assemble thing i would not recommend this kit to anyone who is a beginner to uh, 3d printers okay z is mounted the Z uh, uh, lead screw and motor are mounted. All right. Put that hammer away. What's our next part? All right, we get to build the x-axis now. All right. So. I heard something fall out. something fall out. I don't know what. Oh well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yep, one of these fell out. So we'll figure out where that needs to go. But yes, progress.
All right, X axis parts. Uh, X Y joint upper, X Y joint lower, X carriage, end stop bumper. All right, I think this is the parts that we need. I keep bumping the camera. Ooh, pear sake. That sounds delicious. Okay, I need this piece, I think. That's what it looks like. And I need... No, uh, hmm. Okay, so this is either end of the uh, X axis. Alright. Okay. Alright. Sound like Columbo. So here, I do need heat set inserts, so that means we're going to turn on our uh, our soldering iron again, get out our heat set inserts, a ease of assembly. What does it say? We're going to need these and our shim washers again. Uh, not a drinker, I had a sip. That's nice. Rumi got six bottles from Japan. Ooh, very nice. And we're going to need the M3 by... Third, M3 by 25. M3 by 25. I don't see anything that's labeled M3 by 25. <laughs> I have M3 by 30. So magnets, M3 by 35, M3 by 40, M3 by 8, which these need to go back in there. M3 hex nuts. Well, by process of elimination, that has to be these. And we'll double check. Yeah, these are 25s. All right, well, that answers that question. One of those you hire the guy to assemble it for you. Yeah. Wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. So our heat set. Our soldering iron is heat, heated up. Um, all right, just make sure I got the right piece. That matches the picture in that orientation. Okay, that matches the picture in that orientation. That matches the picture in that orientation. IKEA furniture, 200 bucks. Assemble at your home, 200 bucks. Yep. All right, let's put these into place. Remember kids, melting plastic fumes are good for you. Let it heat up, push it down. Make sure it's nice and flush. Nice and flush. 
take a razor blade and try to trim some of this plastic off. Some of the plastic that oozed up. This really isn't working. There we go. Yeah, they really aren't, but the fumes do have an interesting smell, yes. All right. So, that piece is done. Now we take our M3 by 25s. Two of them. Do not drop them. And they go through, let's see, orient the part like this. I was just thinking, and I know this is random, but someday if I had the chance, I'd love to build my own house from wood timbers and two by fours and cement blocks, do it all by hand. That would be really cool. Like, I, I'm not going to lie, I would love to do that too. But that's a lot of work. If you want to check out some of what it's like, there is a YouTuber by the name of Laura Kampf. K-A-M-P... K-A-M-P-F. Uh, uh, Laura Kampf. Um... She's a maker and a uh, YouTuber in Germany, based out of Cologne, Germany. And uh, she has spent the past year restoring an old, like, 120-year-old house. And it's been interesting, because it's been, like, setback after setback. Well, not really setback after setback. It's like they make two step forwards and then one step back. Um, with stuff. Uh, and she's currently, because her house that she's restoring does not have any, uh, walls on it currently. Um, you know, it's like seeing houses built even help with one being restored to someone else. Nice. Yeah, uh, it's, um... So she's building a tiny house outside of her workshop, so she has a place to stay over the winter. All right, so I need now. I need my shim washers, and I need these spacers. And I'm going to need two per side. Okay. So the first one, that spacer is going to go there. Then, come on. Half a millimeter thick washers. Where the hell did you go? I dropped it and it's... I swear to God, it vanished. There it is. Gremlins, I tell ya. Yeah, welcome on back. Welcome on back, Batman. I'm not done it for myself. I was only a minimal helper. Yeah, but that's still, it's good to help. All right, so we need two washers. There. Two washers on this one. So one, I'm trying to keep this in the, uh, in a good orientation. something here. I want to flip this washer over. Don't tell me why I just do. Don't ask me why. I just want to do it. So the punch sides are out. Okay. Two. Let's get our bearings. Two 
and bearing, 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 bearing. Two more washers on each. One. And two. Why what, Batman? One. Two. <laughs> All right, that is there. Then this needs to go there. You're like not even close to engaging those threads. Okay, tighten those down, make sure that those bearings can still move, which they can. And those are barely engaged. I don't like that at all. Better. They're half engaged now. And then I need to grab the M2 by 10 self tapping screws. Oh, geez, that's going to need these tiny ones. Give me a ball end that tiny? I don't think you did. <laughs> That's not metric. M2, huh? Probably a 1.5. Right then. Well, that'll just go in there. And we'll crank that down. far down as that one's going. Take those up a little bit more. Okay. So that's done. We have next. Now it's the other one. It's 
we need two more heat inserts. We need two more of those, so I'm just gonna do that and then drop the whole package. Oh, now that's a problem. Nope, never mind. I was incorrect, not a problem. There we go. Build, build, fix, yes. Cleared all the baddies, nice. Uh, okay. Let's try to clean some of that plastic off of here. camera again. Let's sink that one a little bit deeper in there. Right. A uh, little bit of plastic in the in the uh, hole that I need to try and take care of. Here we go. All right, looking good. I need to get some more X uh, Exacto knife blades. I'm down to my last one, and I snapped the tip off of it. Okay, so. Here, we need two more of these 25s. And they go here. And here. Building is fine, they said. This will be easy, they claimed, yes. Oh, I knew this was going to be a project pack. I knew this was going to be a project. Like I said, I can't complain. I, I paid zero for this. I won this as a giveaway. So, you know, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. All right. 
Let's orient it that way. Let's get the other two spacers out of here. Let's not drop them. We can go back to there. Okay. Spacer one. Shim water. Shim water. That. Two more shim washers. Yes, but I can stab it. <laughs> Alright. Then we need... One, two, bearing, bearing, two more shim watchers. It's one. Spacer. All right. Then this goes on here. we tighten the uh, before we tighten the uh, two those down I want to seat this self tapping screw do that very carefully. Is this thing is awkward to hold? Let's see if I can uh, crank it down a little bit with this. Thank you. 
Come on, don't strip. Damn it. I think I stripped out the uh, corners on this. This is why I like ball ends better. I'm also not thrilled with the fact that the part looks like it's cracked. Alright, uh... You... No, you don't even... Mm hmm... Because that's sticking up proud. It's not going in. Maybe we can try a slightly larger than 1.5 millimeter. There we go. super concerned that the parts cracked I can always reprint them um, but they're also I mean the whole thing gets held together so I'm not too terribly worried about it Extrusion means we go all the way back. The A extrusion is could only be one of them. Two hundred millimeters and no nothing on the sides. Alright, so this, I believe, is what we need. Alright. Let's get back to page 70 where we were. All right, I need the rail centering clips again. And we get to use this piece, finally. Or she fell apart. OK. 
Okay. So we're going to slide this into place. Just like that. We get to take our last linear rail. Our last linear rail. centering clips on it. Then we need M three by six. M three by six. I don't know how many I'll need, so we'll just dump out a whole bunch. And one's gonna go here, I know that. Oh, these are M2x6s I need. I wonder why that wasn't working. Uh, M2 nuts, M2x6. That is not the right... I need button heads. M2x6 button heads. I don't need SAE. Right, let's see. Oh. in there. You know what? Hold on. I have a metric piece that will work, I think. That one's slightly loose. Okay, another one goes in there. It's not biting.
Probably because the nut popped out. Shoot. Okay. So we're going to do this a slightly different way. Yep, nut popped out. Come on, get in there. I'm pre-attaching these so I can slide the uh, so I can slide the rail in easier. Okay. Good. Now, take those pieces, put them on the ends. says we need to go 25 millimeters from the end so I'm gonna use my calipers Twenty five point zero one is fine. down. Nice and tight. All right. 
it's 25 from that end and 25 from the other end okay so that is perfectly centered nice Okay, always good to invest in a pair of calipers. Also says to preload two M3 nuts in each end. So I'm going to learn from my mistake, and we're going to put in actual M3 nuts and not um, square nuts. Then we need to preload two more M3 nuts on the other side. All right, I don't think I need those anymore because they're centered. I'm gonna move these end stops. No, we're not gonna move the end stops. We are gonna preload two more M3 nuts on the very back side. M three by sixes for the next step. Right. Uh, that's not the right side. They need to go in on this side. Okay. Now we get to attach the idlers. Okay, so this side goes like this. Come on, get in there. There we go. Oh, I love blind. I love blind screws. Those are also M3 by 12s I need. All 
right. Oop. You're in the right position. I don't think that bit. I think it would make more sense to pre-populate these. Get out of there. Oh. oh no, it did. What I mean is, is I'm putting the bolts into the part first, and then putting the nut on the bolt, and then sliding it onto the to the uh, aluminum uh, onto the aluminum extrusion. Instead of having to try and and hit a blind nut, um, basically where I can't see what the hell I'm doing, and if the nut's out of position, I can unfortunately damage the nut. Uh, I am pre putting these nuts on or attempting to I cross-threaded. There we go. Just need a little bit. Yeah, the back side's not so bad because it's just one. But uh, this front side is pretty, pretty gnarly. That's loose. Now, <laughs> where did the other one go? Did I lose a nut? I seem to have dropped and I'm, I'm missing a nut. Or it bounced underneath something. There it is. I dropped it. Alright. This. We do the same thing. 
context. Except this only shows one. Yeah, okay, this only shows one, so I guess... I guess we only do one. So the other one will, will preload in there, that's fine can't go very far. This one... Nice folks, my 3D print just finished. so much fiddliness. We at least just need to get that on threads. in there. Got the one in place there. Let's go ahead and this is a really tight fit. Probably because I cranked these down way too much. Well, let's try to loosen them up a little bit. Totally put those in on the wrong side. These nuts go here. This one will go on the underside. And this. Crank on it and get that in place. Of course, I just lost the two nuts that needed to be in there. Okay, try it again. Hey, Noe, welcome on in. Good to see you. How you doing? Happy New Year. All right, that gets put in. All right. And it says don't tighten those because we need to put these in. And those are the M3 by sixes. They just need two of them. Happy New Year, I'm just floating, not in a good way, oh no.
All right. So that's tightened down, but we're not going to leave it tightened. We're just going to un undo it for a little bit. They said leave them loose. Went too far. So we'll just tighten this. And untighten it. One turn should be good. All right, everything else is good. Now it says, verify the assembly, check your work. Two idlers, one should be on top. Side view, yes. And then this side view, yes. Still not happy about that, but I don't think it's structurally gonna affect anything. All right, now we get to put this in. I see why we had to leave these loose because they might pull out a little bit. Okay. So now we need the M2 by six flat heads. I'm gonna need eight of them. And we'll get our actually decent 1.5 millimeter. Okay. Snowing was raining, now it's snow. I, well, snow on New Year's is necessarily a bad thing. All right. Let's try and get these in in a cross shape. Make sure everything stays square. side. Come on, get out. Sorry, I'm off to the side here, folks. I think 
guess, actually. Hold on. There we go. Dropped a screw. I have no idea where it went. And these screws are so small that they're just kind of gone. <laughs> I hope I have extras. I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. Try and get this piece in, shall we? Why are you not tightening down? I should be getting It's like this screw just doesn't want to bite actually doing. I have to maybe loosen the rest of these so I can get that one seated. take the rest of these out for a minute. Not even. 
I'm looking at this up close and it's like not even going through the part. It's not even going through the part like the rest of them are. Hmm. Is there an M2 by 8? Socket head. No? No? That's the right pieces. Hmm. That hole probably just needs to be reamed out a little bit. It's going to be too big for that. There we go. Let's get the rest of you in there. It is looking good so far. Almost done. Though I haven't even done the uh, anything with the software. Any plans for New Year's? No, not really. Not really doing anything. Crafty and I, I think we're just gonna chill out and watch a movie. in here anymore because <laughs> that is just going to slide back and forth okay that's done Let's get this in place. We'll start with this one. Which again, it seems like it's just not getting deep enough to actually engage. something. Yeah, there we go. That's engaged now. 
Good. All right. And do this next one. How about you, Noe? Do you have any plans for the new year? I think if I remember correctly, you said you uh, were feeling a little under the weather. Sit and knit and drink a bottle of sparkling apple juice. Nice. Trying to make sure this moves back and forth without any binding. Okay. <laughs> Trauma went down at home, so I'm just chilling. Gotcha. Alright. Where did I put my tweezers? back in there. That's getting turned off. Putting these back so I don't lose them. I kind of regret buying them because they're kind of shite. Yeah. I need to get a refill on my drink, folks, and I also need to use the... Hey, there's that screw I, I dropped. Told you I'd found it. All right, I need to uh, take a quick restroom break and uh, refill my drink. So I am going to leave you with some music here, and I will be right back.
All right, we are back. And you enjoy your nap, Argon. You or your feet, as in Legos. Not quite sure what you mean by that, Noe. But let's go ahead and back to this. And also, so, um, let's see, that's flipped. You can kind of see it. This is what I just printed. Not a very good uh, camera angle, but what I love about this particular build platform is that I can take it off. It is magnetic. And then I can just peel stuff off of it. And it just pops right off. And I'll hit this with a heat gun to take care of the little stringy, um, little stringy stuff. But uh, the whole point of this is, see, this is uh, this little bit of plastic here is called a skirt, and I can just use this, and it peels right off. So there was some black still in there. <laughs> All right. So, just another tool to add to my repertoire of 3D printing stuff. And now I have to decide what I'm going to print next. Alright. Let's get back to this. Again, trying to make sure that these don't bind. Okay, now I should be able to tighten these. All right, just trying to make sure that the movement is free between all of those. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Make sure I can have a preview here. All right, so we've done that. Z-axis end stop strike block. Okay. Z, X, Y joints, cable tie, G shaft mod spacer, uh, Z, X, end stop bumper. Could be in here somewhere. It is going to be. Somewhere in here. There it is. All right. Let's get rid of some of these empty bags that we don't need anymore. Which, I need a place for them, but I don't really have a place for them. All right, so the end stop striker will go like this. An M3 by 16 
either direction. Which way does it go? I think it goes this way. The other thing is that I need to make sure that the nut, which I can no longer get to uh, at all, is in the right position. I think it's in the right position now. Feels like it's in the right position. Okay. The end stop striker block has a little flat piece that's on top. So I believe the orientation is like that. And I need the M3 by 16. I need two of them. All right, there's two. The screws used to set the trigger position for the X end stop. I don't think that's an M3 sized hole on uh, our side. I think I got that screw, or I don't think I got that nut. I don't think I got that. See down there. Unfortunately, no, I really can't. I don't know why they didn't have me do this in the first place. Oh, yeah, I think I totally screwed that up and destroyed the uh, the nut and the threads at the same time. It's a problem. All right, let's try to seat this first, then back it off. Drop everything. Where did you go? Seriously, where the hell did you go? The... You guys did see that, right? The, the the screw fell down here somewhere and then just vanished. Ah, <laughs> uh, there it is, rolled away. I want to see something. Oh, I've lost two more square nuts. Lovely. Oh, well, we'll fix that when we come to it.
All right, threads are still good. Let's see about this. Really don't want to have to take this whole thing apart again. Uh, Bunny Fist, welcome on in and happy New Year's from Germany. Happy New Year. Welcome, welcome on in. How are you doing? Can we maybe? No. No. No, I can't get into that side. Uh, just gotta keep trying until we get it. Yes, Happy New Year, Bunny Fist, and welcome on in. Good to see you. That's hitting the right spot. I'm awake, I'm alive, and so it doesn't really feel like 2023 yet, but same could be said. Yeah, 365.25 days ago. <laughs> Trying to get a nut lined up here. That's why I'm faffing about.
Yeah, this is not working. Hmm. So if I can get it lined up like this... Wait, maybe I did. It's the right screw, M13 by 16, or M3 by 16, I'm sorry. these and shift the rail over. No, I can't do that. Nope, I can't do that because that's a specific that is a specific distance that needs to be reserved. loosen this and this one so we get a little bit of play I want to see something here. Yeah, it's not going to fit, but... It says 17, yeah, so that's... That nut should be in the right position. Let's give this a try with the fresh screw. Maybe we'll have better luck. Don't want to strip out another screw. Now, this is not tightening down, and that is really annoying me.
really hope I didn't damage this one. It looks like I did. Ah, that may just be a bad nut in there, which is gonna suck, because I have no way to, I have to take everything apart to get to it again. Well, if that's what I gotta do, that's what I gotta do. Yeah, no kidding. Tell you what I will do though is I'm gonna pre-mount this. All right. The problem is getting these out. I haven't stripped any of them. That one. That one's been stripped. I don't even know if I can get it out anymore. Ah, <sighs> we'll try a slightly bigger. I don't even know if that fits. Doesn't seem like it does. That doesn't fit. You just spin. Wait, this one works. on the inside. Ooh. Uh, we'll get a fresh one. Where were we? break this stopper back in place not this one because I don't need to take that end off
Okay. Where'd you come from? Oh, you're not even in place. Gosh darn it. Alright. Yep. I do need to do that. All these fiddly parts. I know tweezers really aren't what I should be using for this. I should be using a pair of pliers, something with some more grip. Ugh. Just lounging and lurking. That's quite all right. Please do. Again and again and again until we get it right. There we go. Okay. gets pushed into place. This. All the pieces in place. Now I just need to put on this. Put a nut in there. nut out of here, which I just launched across the room. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I trashed the threads on that one. Hey, the Granada IQs, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome, welcome on in. Sorry, I don't have an alert for you. I have a very minimalist setup going right now because I don't usually stream from my workshop. But yes, if you don't know me, my name is Zero Wolf. I'm a variety streamer, and we are currently working on building a 3D printer.
There we go. Now you see that's actually like working the way that it's supposed to. All right, let's line this up, muscle this into place. Perfect. Okay, back up here. And now we put these back in. Start with the hardest ones first. side almost done. That's a fixed. Now, just line that up. Start getting these into place. in. in place. Thank you. Stay healthy, bot. I know I've been live for four hours. Ugh, I do need to get better at my posture. I've been sitting here. Cr uh, I have been sitting here hunched over and that is not good. I need to de-shrimp. All right, that one's tight. Come on, come out. these move without impingement.
and make sure that they're square. Come on. You were just moving well. Alright, that's good. Let's go ahead and tighten these down. Uh, can't tell. It looks like there's approximately 1.5 millimeters on either side. tight nice and tight good bingo all right those two bumpers off all right so now i need to take this and put it in here for the x end stop which, this is going to be fun, because I don't think this hold is quite large enough. Yeah, I don't think it's quite large enough. I don't have any millimeter drill bits. Thank you, Crafty. I will take a drink. There. Did I see it from this side? Actually, if I need to. ETA. Um this uh i want to get this piece in let's see what our next step is um come on okay all right this will be our last step uh this will be our last thing that we do today and so yeah crafty I don't know another five minutes or so I'd say go ahead and start the oven all right I don't know if that worked probably didn't Yeah, it didn't really work. I do have some files. What I should be able to do is just come in here. And unless I want to air fry it, I could air fry it. If we want to try that. All right, let's see how that fits now.
There we go. Oh, it's biting in. It's a little out of square. That should be fine. Once this cuts its threads, eh, it's really tight. I don't particularly trust it. I don't particularly trust that, so we're going to get a file again, hit it from both ends. Give that a try. just gonna set that like so okay all right I have thoughts on this idea but zero city found a recipe <laughs> uh, now of course now it wants me to tighten these things so we're gonna back this out just a little bit Good enough. All right, we got nice unimpeded movement. Nice unimpeded movement. Still got to work on that. All right. Well, we made a lot of progress today, folks. A lot of progress. Why are you binding? Don't bind. Do I need to like oil you or something? Maybe I need to do that. What makes you sing? Movies and magazines magnify. Buildings and bridges, they pass away. Probably not what I'm supposed to do. I don't really care. People make things happen, people make the dreams come true. Hey, 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 we make the music. I think that you should know that. We make the music. Oh, yeah, much better. sticky point right here. All right. But folks, that is where we're going to call it a night tonight. Thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate it. That's not where that goes. This one goes there. All right. Everything's in place there. This one needs to get folded. Don't mind me while I sit here and clean up everything. Uh, all right, this was the busted. Yeah, that's the rounded one, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Close this up. All 
But yes, thank you very much, everybody, for coming in. I hope you have had fun just chilling with me. We've made a lot of good progress. I'm very pleased with the progress we've made. And I'm looking forward to finishing this. We're getting closer. You know what? So I don't lose parts. I'm going to put these square nuts away. We are going to lose parts. So let's not lose parts. Um, those by six and two by six x nuts all these parts will just go up here all right and throw all of those into our magnet here all right yeah there we go all right so let's see who's live and uh let's share the love here but uh until next time folks take care of yourselves there we go thank you very much for coming in tonight i appreciate it for hanging out with me and uh sorry adjusting camera um thank you very much for hanging out and uh keeping me company I hope you have had a wonderful time chilling. I know I have. But let's see who's live on Twitch and we'll share the love. Okay. are quite welcome there silver you have yourself a wonderful evening and a happy new year's